Um, yeah, what's going on, man? How's how's things? Uh, not too bad, honestly. Can't can't complain. You know, we got a few hundred people on here, so can't can't really complain. You know, good good crowd, and let's uh, let's liven things up a bit, and get everyone uh, awake and ready with some Q and A. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of really good intuitive um, question and answer. So we're gonna step away from uh, presenting for a little bit, and then after Harry, we got Devin Zander and uh, Justin Walls. We got some amazing people still left today. So really excited for that. Harry, how's everything going with business as of late with uh, with the coronavirus for you? I know that you're still heavily dropshipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, the obviously everyone who is dropshipping. Well, first and foremost, let me just introduce, introduce myself just in case anyone don't know. Um, obviously, Harry Coleman. Um, if you don't know and you haven't watched my YouTube channel, then go and check it out, aka uh, The Beast of Ecom. I've uh, been dropshipping for over four years now. I uh, generated over eight figures um, prior to getting fired from a nine-to-five job. Um, but in terms of the current situation, of course, everything at the moment in time, in terms of CPMs, is extremely cheap. Um, however, in the last week or so, I have been seeing them creeping up. But on the flip side of that, of course, you know, uh, the situation in China at the moment in time with shipping, um, if you're drop shipping, you're going to be faced with two challenges. Uh, and they are basically, you know, if you want good shipping is going to cost you an arm and leg and it's experience it's extremely expensive there's been things that i've had to cut down and scale down on some stores and some campaigns where you know the, literally my supplier is messaging me every other day saying prices are going to go up prices are raising prices are raising um if you want the good shipping if you want to which i don't personally recommend if you want to still sell you know um at a cheaper and still utilize e-packet then you're going to be looking at a minimum of 30 days to 40 days to get the product to the customer so while cpms are cheaper it's great and obviously uh roas we found is a lot more higher than obviously previously when there's a lot more advertisers um but on the flip side of that sourcing is uh, a lot more difficult and stock as well as shipping um is becoming a bit of a a bit of a pain but nevertheless we're we're still cracking on and doing fine that's awesome, bro. Um, and, and again, I appreciate you coming on to, to speak. Harry actually spoke at our New York City event that was earlier this year, right before the, the virus ended up hitting. And um, one of our like highest feedback, like highest feedback receiving speakers out of everyone that we had there. Um, so it's a pleasure to have you back, man. So with everything that's been going on, what would you say has been like the biggest change? Or is there anything that you have had to pivot in, in regard to advertisements landing pages since the buyer experience has changed because i mean a lot of people are saying that not only e-commerce but shopping in itself has warped 10 years in like 10 weeks from mm -hmm. everything that we've been experiencing mm -hmm. yeah so one of the changes that i've made uh towards the ad copy and store that are two things that generally most of we've been making changes to is just if you're looking at products now and to the recent winners that uh we're currently still running at the moment of time uh based on uh, niches where people are stuck at home you got to remember at the moment in time of course people who are stuck at home can't do certain things so if you're selling a product which um, you know people can utilize at home and three of the biggest niches at the moment in time uh, well you know I would personally say are home fitness of course everyone's trying to sell in resistant bands at the moment in time yeah uh, I think everyone and their mom's trying to sell you know resistant bands um but um kids as well stuff for, uh, stuff for kids at home because obviously here in the UK kids are still at um off school I'm not sure about other places in the world but they're still at home so uh kids toys anything that you can play on and the ad copy in terms of the actual selling of the product, we then frame it in a way where we're always saying, uh, entertain your kids while they're, you know, away from school, keep them still educated. Um, you know, I I'm framing the ad copy in that kind of way. And then in the same, um, in the same essence, we're matching that on the landing product page as well. Um, so, you know, we're, we're hitting people from that angle. And again, flipping back to the people who can't get to the gym, it's obviously, you know, stay fit while, you know, still keep your, whatever you want to say, last year's gains, you know, using that terminology that people generally use when they go to the gym um, and using that on your ad copy and on your product pages is what we've seen had the, the best impact on, um, you know, uh, selling throughout this time. There's some issues where I've just gone up and then there's other things which, you know, we're working before now are just not essential people are just not spending any money on it so you, as a marketer of course you've got to keep um flipping with the times and, and just capitalize on what you can but you have to be a creative thinker 
Um, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of new people struggle with. Um, but if you can become a creative thinker and think how you can sell this product and it's all about the angle, especially when you're marketing on Facebook, um, that's when you have the biggest upside in terms of your ads. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's one of the biggest problems that people feel that the consumer behavior is still going to carry over, but people have different pain points. People have different needs and there are different ways that you need to speak to your consumer in order to actually be able to convert them into, you know, buying customers rather than just general traffic that's hitting your store. So th that's a really good point. H have you seen anything different in, in any of your typical stores that you've been running with, you know, how they're interacting? Are there more window shoppers? Are there more just flat out buyers? What, what have you seen, uh, if anything, has changed vastly by way of the consumer behavior from like some of your stores or even like other people in the industry that you've spoken to? Not so much of the actual change. I mean, what you're going to find is a lot more people who will be purchasing online who may not have purchased before, you know? So there's a lot of people, depending on obviously the demographics where you are targeting, if you're targeting a product um, for people say, you know, over 35 plus, um, most of the time, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be age, ageist, I think it's called here, but nine times out of 10, <laughs> they'll go to like the, the store and purchase it, right? Yeah. Um, but if they can't or in, they're at the high risk kind of category of catching corona or whatever it may be, they're kind of forced at the moment in time to make purchases online. So what you'll generally find, uh, again, I don't go through the data in terms of actually analyzing the, the age groups of people and all that kind of jazz, but um, in essence of people who I've been speaking to in the industry and some of the agencies that I follow and stuff like that, what they're generally seeing is they're finding a lot more of the first time buyers um, into the company or into the brand that you're that, that all the product that you're selling rather than kind of the people who would just usually purchase online. So that's one of the big uh, upsides of people being stuck inside is that they're having to be forced to actually make a purchase online and providing that you do a good job, uh, you know, and make sure that you um, get the product to them on time, the products of, 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 of quality, um, or you've got some sort of LTV backend uh, upsells in place, then you can have that customer for, you know, uh, a duration of six to 12 or whatever it months uh, onwards. So that's one of the big upsides of, of um, you know, spending habits most definitely. 100%. So if there was anything right now for now that we're like in a completely different world of online shopping going on towards like the rest of the year and beyond, um, anything that you feel like you're going to implement that you may have not done before or something that's like really intriguing you right now that, that you're potentially going to try out or have been trying in your business? Well, in terms of, I mean, my strategy personally hasn't changed in terms of um, like setting up, I mean, uh, setting up stores. One thing that I obviously I'm doing and focusing on now, as well as the, the drop shipping products that we've got running at the moment in time, is focusing on a uh, on a brand um, in terms of uh, actually supplying from Alibaba, buying it yourself, and you know white labeling it. It's, to be honest, it's a it's an absolutely pain in the ass, and it's a lot more slower than um, just drop shipping, getting a product and, and selling it. Um, but in terms of like changing my actual strategy and those kind of things, I've I've, I've rarely changed, you know, my strategy. Um, for a long time, you know, I used to do uh, duplicating now kind of like just raise budgets, CBOs, those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. So I haven't, I, I probably won't be changing anything in terms of my strategy or setting up and those kind of things. Um, we'll just be rolling as, as much as possible. For sure. Now I have a couple of people that like even work in, in one of my agencies that have said that they've actually been hit hard with when they try CBO and they've seen better success with ABO and kind of like surfing those budgets on a day-to-day -day basis, like typically in the morning and then later on throughout the day. Um, with, you know, some of the success that you've seen as of late, um, are you steering more CBO or ABO and why? So I test with ABO and when the whole Facebook was saying that it's going to be mandatory, I focused a lot of just CBO testing. That was all I was doing for literally since um, 2000, uh, last year they announced it um, early in the year, 2019. So from around about February all the way to February, March, April, probably till about May, I was just consistently just testing CBO because the announcement was that it was going to be in September. Everything was going to be CBO mandatory. So yeah. I made it a um, like, you know, something that I had to do and had to learn. It worked good. Um, but then after I was consistently finding that um, testing with CBOs, it takes a long time for it to actually yield good results. So the first day I'll always be like 0.7 ROAS or the first day would be like good and then the next day would be crap and then the next day would be crap. 
Um, and I think CBOs and what I personally find from what I spend and how I run things is I always test with ABO because it gives me a lot more control to be able to test. Uh, and use CBOs solely for uh, using once I find proven audiences and proven creators, then I put them into CBOs to scale. Um, that's kind of been my strategy for a long time since, um, you know, since for a while now in terms of actually scaling CBOs is always consistently finding um, the winning audiences and winning creatives, then put them into CBOs to scale. One thing that I do do though, is I do test creatives in CBOs so I'll start off testing. Um, so let's say, for example, we're launching a product now. Uh, we're, we're launching this bottle of water, right? First thing I'll do is I'll start out with, um, you know, eight ad sets, uh, ABO, ad set budgets. Each ad set would have a different um, interest. And um, within those ad sets, we'd have around three different creatives, okay? Each creative could be, uh, you want to only want to single out just one um one variable so it might just be okay we'll keep the creative we'll keep the thumbnails the same but we'll change the ad copies on each of them or we'll have the um the ad copies different and we'll change yeah did i get that oh yeah we'll have the ad copies the same and different thumbnails i'll run that and let's say for example for three days we've got uh you know a handful of creates a handful of uh, audiences um and creators which look good then what I'll do is I'll start scaling out horizontally. So adding in new interests because we're only starting with eight. I'd start out adding in new interests from there. And what I'll do is out of those three that you initially started with, you'll generally find out of those either one or two of them will start to pull in most of the sales. So what I then like to do is I then set up a, a CBO testing campaign with either the best audience or the second best audience. OK, and then just make um, five different ad sets and um, five different ad sets in that CBO to creatively test and just make um, any sort of variations off that winning creative. So, you know, we then might change out and use a different thumbnail in one of the ad sets. We then, I then change out the video in one of the thumbnails uh, in, in one of the um, ad sets and go from there. Uh, and then again, just consistently. Um, scale out using horizontally scaling. And then once we've got enough sales on a perch on an ad set to be able to okay, say, okay, we've been running this for a week now, it's got 10 purchases. Um, we've got a winning audience, we've got a winning creative here. Then we move to CBOs to be able to scale them further. And in terms of actually scaling CBOs, uh, for me personally, I increase the budgets. Uh, I don't like to duplicate CBOs. I know that Facebook are very much pushing towards account simplification. Uh, you know, less duplication, less overlap and all that kind of jazz. So what I like to do is scale CBOs, increase in the budget. But if I am going to then duplicate, uh, I would like to do it inside of different ad accounts, either in the same business manager or a different business manager. So gotcha. hopefully that kind of helps. Yeah. So, so when you're scaling the CBOs, would you say that when, is it a specific ROAS that you're really aiming for to dictate how aggressively you're going to scale like if you see something after you launch it is you know hitting four five six x from the start um are you going out there and doubling it or are you doing more of a traditional like marginal increase so most of the time it will be a marginal increase i used to because i mean cbos are, are good but you still have may you still have massive fluctuations um all of the time so what i generally like to do is do marginal increase but it, were very, but it will very much depend on your KPIs for the product. So if you are, if your KPIs are good and you know that you launched it and always when you launch a CBO, no matter what, try and hold out and leave it for at least three to four days. Even if the first day you end up burning through a ton of cash, um, uh, generally you do want to leave it for at least uh, three days, four days max. Um, if on the second day, you know, you realize that you're at to cart, so just, you know, you're burning through money and you, you link click through rates trash, then of course, you know, just turn it off so that you don't burn through money. But yeah. if your add to cart rates are good, but you're just not getting those purchases, then generally I'll leave it for those fourth days. Uh, but for me, for me personally, I like to do marginal increases on the budget. So around about 30%. Um, I used to like double, um, but I find that they get quite a bit rocky at a certain point. So personally, I find that every three to four days that are profitable, I like to then increase the budget by about 30 to 20 percent and just consistently do that. It's a lot slower, um, but I find that it works a lot better and the stability is there rather than scaling and going from, you know, uh, a $500 CBO to a $1,000 CBO. 
to then run it for three days and then all of a sudden you've lost what you made. So that's what I generally find works well. Yeah, 100%. Um, so we got like roughly 10 to 15 minutes left. I'm going to let people start going to the chat box with a few questions so that could kind of open up into other ideas and topics of conversation. I'm going to take it away with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll, uh, let me just drop in there my, uh, my ebook as well because I know that um, I've had quite a decent feedback from this. Um, so yeah. if anyone wants to check this out, it's 100% free. Uh, let me make sure I upload the... Yeah, if, if it's a PDF, you could uh, yes. do it as a handout in the top yeah. right. So see, there's chat, polls, and handouts, and then you can go ahead and add a new one. Um, guys, Harry's stuff is like truly, truly valuable. Oh, if you cool. want to check out his ebook, it's it's definitely something worth checking out. This isn't just like something for you to be pitched. Oh um, yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. This is 100 percent free. I mean, you can get this, but just say this just saves you signing up for our email. Uh, say, uh, do I click save or share now? Share now. Um, yeah, share now. Uh, so yeah, guys, this is stuff that you typically opt in yeah, it for. Yeah, through pretty much everything. So you guys can just use that. Um, again, go through it and, and, and whatever, you know. Um, but let's go through some of these questions. Let's see what we've got here. By the way, it's 11.20 p.m. here, guys. So if I'm looking a bit rich, <laughs> I'm rocking the, the quarantine beard here as well. Um, why don't you uh, – why do you test on CBO – that means you don't trust Facebook for choosing you the right ad set. Um, second question, do you test in ABO then duplicate the winning ad set into the CBO for scaling? Yeah, so I kind of mentioned that. Um, I just personally find from testing, um, testing CBOs, I generally find that when you stick in inside of CBO stuff that Facebook doesn't know, which is proven, um, they just generally just take a lot more time to, to pick up. So what I like to do is test with ABOs. That way I can turn off ad sets rather than just waiting, you know, three, four days for it to pick up. Um, and then the answer to your question as well is um, question two, do you test an ABO then duplicate the winning ad sets into CBO? Yeah. So essentially once you've found an ad set, um, you know, you may have three that are working really, really well. You can do various different things. It depends how I'm feeling. So I've got, if I've got one ad set, um, one audience where it's absolutely massive, then I would take that and duplicate that three times inside of a CBO, set the uh, set the budget and scale with that. If all of the other ad sets are around about the same audience size, then I would take all three of them. So you've got three different audiences inside of the CBO uh, and scale that way. Um, you could start off doing that, like I've mentioned, to start with, have all three. And then if that one works, then scale out further and give each of those interests a further CBO themselves if you wanted to. So hopefully that answers your uh, your question. Uh, do you scale multiple products per ad account? No. So what I like to do is once I've got a winner inside of one ad account, I will keep that ad account just for that product. Uh, this is one thing that I've learned over the years. Um, you know, I've had multiple bands. I've pretty much been through everything with Facebook, with PayPal, with Stripe, with you name it, um, it's happened. Um, so now the setup, and I know that um, Zach, I think his name was, um, talked mm -hmm. about um, safeguarding accounts, pretty much kind of the same thing. Um, so my main points to you would be uh, make sure, of course, you've got uh, two admins on your business manager, yourself and someone else, whether it be a friend, girlfriend, you know, mistress, <laughs> you know, whoever, whoever <laughs> it was to be, just put it on there just so that if you get your ad account restricted, your personal access, you can, um, you know, still access your business manager. And then um, make sure you have two pixels on your website. This is something that I like to do as well. I like to have two pixels on my website, but each of the pixels are from different business managers. So that way, if my one of the business managers gets disabled, then you've got to remember everything inside of that business manager goes down. Your lookalike audiences, your custom audiences, your pixels, ad accounts, everything. Um, so you lose that data, whereby if you've got two different pixels on your store with two different business managers, then you just safeguard yourself even more. Um, and then in answer to that question, do I scale with multiple products per ad account? And the answer to that is yes. So like I mentioned, if I've got one winning product, uh, which is, you know, you know what a winning product's like, it's just bringing in most of your revenue, right? Just have that in that one ad account that's scaling. And then you can just test other products inside of another ad account. And then once you've got another winning product, keep it in that ad account and then just, just continue on from there. Um, when is the best time to retarget? Uh, so personally, the first I always set up, so your middle of funnel is always going to be people who have engaged with the business, but not viewed 
the content essentially i like to do it generally set up retargeting when you get to when you build up enough data to be able to go into your 95 percent um lookalike audiences at that point you know you've generally got something on your hands um that's when i set up retargeting you don't want to set up your retargeting and jump the gun just to bring in a couple of sales doesn't really make sense so i always like to get to the point whereby i'm um you know at least kind of a week into the product and i've got my 95 video views percent look like then i'll go into retargeting um what else have we got on here uh, uh someone asked um top if you three find anyone ad media channels say that again um they said top three ad media channels uh besides facebook and instagram i mean adwords is really big and also pinterest has really really uh cheap cpms uh, I like Pinterest a lot, but this is uh, more often than not based on the product. Certain products are really mm -hmm. well fit for Pinterest, but one of the upsides of Pinterest is that you get that traffic for really cheap and then you put them into your retargeting funnel. So when you think about it, literally everyone on Pinterest is on that platform for planning purchasing decisions. It's mm -hmm. literally what everyone goes on the platform to do, whether they're planning to get something new for their house, you know, for their kitchen, whatever. And then what you could then do is put them through an elaborate funnel um, hit them with discount codes, make sure that you have good retargeting set up for your, um, for your site, not only just, you know, the short, like three to seven day, but also a little bit further out. And then also pair that with stuff such as SMS bump or, you know, email follow up so that you could try to retain as much of that traffic as possible. Um, Pinterest is really good. And then AdWords is also fantastic. It, it really depends what you're selling though, for those two respective platforms, whereas Facebook and Instagram give you the flexibility to sell pretty much anything yeah. unless it's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I pretty much agree with that. Um, you know, in terms of everything else, you get loads. Of, you get like you know Snapchat ads. I don't really mess around with a lot of Snapchat ads, but again, with Pinterest ads, those kind of things, you can build up your retargeting funnel. You know, your buckets, and then retarget them on Facebook or Google AdWords or whatever it may be. Um, you get cheaper CPMs, but making a product convert on those platforms are a hell of a lot more uh, harder, um, especially for those guys who have tested it out um, and what it seems to be. Really quickly, someone just asked, uh, how do you put two pixels on Shopify? It only allows you to have one. Uh, yeah, so you just get an app for that. I personally like to either use um, Vitals has uh, an, an built in one or Pixel Perfect has another built and built one. Um, but you'll need an app for it unless you get a developer to hard code it, uh, another one in yourself, which again is fairly easy to do. Devin, uh, that's a funny answer. Um, how do you maintain a good? uh facebook customer feedback score with long shipping times um harry did you speak about this at my event or was it someone else uh duh, 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 duh. i can't really even remember what my presentation um my memory is it was a while ago good, dude, honestly. actually i think it might have been the last virtual summit but um one thing that you definitely want to do is is go and you can change that feedback loop so yeah the, the time period. So, so one thing i always do is like you mentioned i change the um i change the the thing from uh, four weeks to, to nine weeks to give you that um, that, uh, that that break. And one thing I always do is I set up a what's called a reassurance flow. And what that does basically, you can set it up in Klaviyo if you really want to. Um, and what you do basically is you just set a flow up whereby everyone who purchases a product, okay, uh, generally you want to know what your shipping times are on average. Most of the time at the far end, it's like four weeks. Um, whereas most of the stuff, if you're using an agent like myself, generally it's between two weeks and three week mark period. Um, so in terms of the, the, what we like to do is I always set up a reassurance flow. Um, basically what it is, everyone who purchases a product gets uh, three emails spaced out over a week. So the first one will say, um, you know, hey, thanks for the purchase, etc. Please remember that orders may take et cetera time, you know, um, seven to you know, 19 days or whatever you want to, however you want to frame it. And then after seven days, they'll get another email to say, um, hey, your order's still on the way. Everything's totally fine. We're packaging it. We're, you know, we're doing it, whatever it may be. This is totally normal. And then they'll get another one in three weeks. And that one will say, um, hey, uh, everything's totally normal, etc." cetera. Uh, and I will say, if you've already received your product, then ignore this email. If you haven't, reach out to us, let us know. And then we'll finally do another one in, say, like four weeks' time. Uh, whereby again, it will be the same kind of framed in a certain way, but it will be like, have you ever received your product yet? Uh, if they haven't, please feel free to email us. At that point, we can see where it is, get the VAs to check the tracking, et cetera. So that's one thing that you want to do as well as setting up the, um, as setting up the, uh, that thing. But one thing I will say is about the page score thing is that if you're selling a product, which is like trash or is not what it's meant to be, then 
unfortunately your page score is just going to keep going down it doesn't matter um even if you improve products even if you improve the shipping times or anything like that you know if the product's trash it will just keep going down even if you start up new pages um so i personally find that the product quality has a lot more um effect on what your page score will be rather than your shipping times because people are willing to wait for a you know if i order something from the us nine times out of ten of, of clothing i've done it before nine times out of ten it takes like two weeks anyway so you know people are willing to wait for a quality product but if they get it and they wait two three weeks and it's trash that's when you're um that's when you're gonna be at the mercy of that page score for sure bro um i, I think that that's all like really really important i mean everything we went over in this in the session was awesome um thank you so much for coming on bro if you have any closing thoughts for like in the next minute or so let people know what you got going on for the rest of 2020 feel free to do any shameless plugs i, I i'm totally for you know people going ahead and uh checking out your stuff yeah uh, i'm gonna um, drop your your instagram here make sure you guys show some love tag tag harry give him a follow he's always sharing a lot of valuable information on his instagram his youtube and everything so yeah, um so you can take it away bro yeah, if anyone wants to follow me on Instagram, um, feel free to do so. I know that Anthony's um, put it on there, Beast of Ecom. Uh, check out my YouTube channel if you want more information in terms of pretty much everything on there. Uh, you know, product research videos, Shopify tips, you know, how to handle PayPal chargebacks, scaling Facebook ads, the lot. Uh, go check out my uh, my YouTube channel. Um, hit me up on this. I've already mentioned Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Join my Facebook group. And if you want to learn more, um, then check out my uh, my Econ Beast course. But um, again, I certainly if you want to learn more. But but yeah, I appreciate it, dude. No worries. Of course, man. Thank you so much. And and Harry seriously has one of the most valuable YouTube channels out there. Like the stuff that he puts out there for free is ridiculous. So uh, definitely check him out. And uh, next, we're bringing on Devin Zander, who is one of my favorite guys in the industry as well, and has been here for quite some time Devin are you there one thing I will say actually is Devin was one of the first but well, one of the first guys um, who actually started um, who actually I came across when I got into drop shipping which is insane um, yeah he, Dev, Dev, Devin um, just Dev, Devin Justin Taylor Robert, and, Nava. Uh, Robert Nava I remember they came out we're going back <laughs> to 2016 here Econ um, Premier Academy. Yeah, days. Those, the, yeah, those were the days when um, I first got into to drop shipping. So, uh, so yeah, it's funny to say, you know, hey, dude, I appreciate well, it. What's up, bro? How's it going? Yeah, you've got a fire camera there, Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. I'm, uh, aspirations are quit my day job, become a professional streamer. One step at a time, dude. I can't quite figure <laughs> out how to quit the day job. Like, my dog's a slave driver. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, let you get to it. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of the event.